believe there's more to the story tonight. Well, it is a very sad story, Sam, and I know a lot of people have decided to make this into an issue about Jeff Kennett and whether he should or shouldn't leave the club. You've got some more news on that in a moment and I have my views on that too. I think I maintain this is a much bigger story. It's about every AFL club. It's about the Hawthorne Football Club and things that happened to Cyril Rioli in the years that preceded Jeff Kennett's presidency as well. His comments about Shannon's wife, Shannon Cyril's wife's genes, were really the straw that broke the camel's back after years of racial red flags that upset Cyril Rioli. And I want to take you back to just one incident, and there are many we could talk about tonight, but some of them involve players still playing in the AFL, and for their own privacy, I'm not going to talk about that now until they're ready to. But we, I take you back to 2015 and a game that was played at the MCG against the Sydney Swans. I was at the game that night... Um, that, it was that night that it really became apparent that football supporters were booing Adam Goods. Mm -hmm. The booing was loud. I heard it. It was discussed at the AFL function I attended. It was discussed by Sydney bosses with AFL bosses. And it was played down by the Hawthorne leaders at the time. What we now know is that in the rooms at half-time, several of Hawthorne's Indigenous players, including Cyril Rioli and Sean Burgoyne, were very upset by what they were hearing on the footy field. At the end of the game, depending on who you believe, they actually talked about it to various leaders at the club. The players what, did. Yes, what is definitely known, what is definitely known is that later that week, Sean Burgoyne met the CEO of the club, Stuart Fox, and the then president of the club, Andrew Newbold, to talk about his very deep feelings about what was going on with Adam Goods. It is now known that there was a view among Hawthorne's Indigenous players that they felt the club should have put out some form of statement acknowledging what had happened to Adam Goods and in some way acknowledging what the Hawthorne supporters had done. Hawthorne never did that. The view of Andrew Newbold at the time was that it was not racially motivated. They don't boo players like Cyril Rioli. That's not why they're booing Adam Goods. We also know that some of these players did not want to play the following week. And I gather Alistair Clarkson became involved at that point. Now, these are, this is just one thing that happened at Hawthorne. And other clubs did not respond well to the booing of Adam Goods either. But I've always felt that Hawthorne should have taken a stand that night because it got worse after that. There was the Carlton game just afterwards with the dance and then it ended up with West Coast. And it was, took actually another CEO, Trevor Nisbet, to have the bravery to speak out. Days after that booing, Hawthorne announced a $1 million Indigenous sponsorship with the Epic Good Foundation. There we see Hawthorne, some of their Indigenous players, including Cyril Rioli and Sean Burgoyne, at the announcement. It is just unbelievable that they were receiving a million dollars over five years and yet they still only paid an Indigenous liaison officer to work for them one day a week. This is another thing that Hawthorne and Cyril Rioli, Cyril Rioli I should say, was really disappointed in. Just one of many incidents and even people who were bosses at that club at the time, some can't quite remember where the money went. No one's suggesting it was misappropriated, but did it go to the right programs for the Indigenous players who were there at the time? If Hawthorne don't conduct a review into what went on in the Cyril Rioli years and before, then they're kidding themselves. Because if they don't m mend this relationship, it's going to harm the club for years to come. Well, we know what's happened with Collingwood. I mean, they've been to Helen back in the last um, couple of years admitting to past failings. There's a fair bit to unpack out of that, Lloyd. There is. Uh, who, who in that then, Caro, 2050, who were the benchmark clubs who had all those, you know, those Indigenous officers and all that in order at that stage? And how, to the point where I'm trying, not trying to give them excuses, but say, were we just too far behind the times at that point? The club I played at Port, Port Adelaide was amazing in that space. They had an Indigenous officer, Paulie Vandenberg, for 11 years you know, from 2010 up until it a couple of seasons. It was only replaced last year by Sean, Sean Burgoyne and himself. So now Paul Vandenberg. You can only speak on your own yeah. experience, but Mark Williams through the programs we had were amazing. Carol, I think the, the most, well, one of the most damning allegations in the piece that you wrote on the weekend was a comment made by a senior Hawthorne player that was directed at the partner of a teammate which then went to the leadership group. Have, well, the, leaders, have the leadership group responded to that? Because there were some big names in that group. Yeah, um, the leadership, some members of the leadership group have come to me and insisted they didn't know about this. Um, the view, the version, Cyril's view is that the leadership group did know about it and did nothing. I have now ascertained that some members of the leadership group were there at the end of season trip when the comment was made 
and nothing happened. Senior players were there, including club leaders, official leaders, and nothing happened. Sam Mitchell, who is now coaching Hawthorne, has in conducted his own investigation into that incident, and it, and it has been ascertained that it did happen. Sam Mitchell has, has spoken to Hawthorne's Indigenous players, uh, you know, before my story appeared, knowing it was going to appear, to see how they were feeling. And the message conveyed to him was, Things are pretty good at the moment at Hawthorne, but maybe not so good back in 2014, 2015. Mm. Sam Mitchell, we, we have now seen Footy Classified, a long list of um, direct messaging that went on between Cyril Rioli and his former four-time premiership teammate and now coach Sam Mitchell. It, um, I'm, I'm, these, these began in December last year. Sam yep. McClure, when Sam Mitchell first reached out to Cyril Rioli. So he essentially Cyril, accuses the club of, of gaslighting there in the second paragraph. He, he says, I'm a proud Hawthorne player and I won't be robbed of that. I've never said that I wasn't. He said that that's very much a, a part of his life. He spent, he spent, he, he basically helped build that club. I've given my life to Hawthorne and yep. I've helped build that organisation. I agree that there is a need for change. It's not lost on me and the nation that the AFL needs to change in a significant way. While I do want that, we need to sort this out in a real way. I need my club to be there in a real way. Now, Sam Mitchell responded in January. Hey, mate, I've been working on some things since your last message. Thank you for your passion. He says that he's been working with Chad Wingard, Jarman Impey and Tyler Brockman, and they're putting some education around Australia Day. We're trying to work out how to best educate our playing group and staff about its history and how hurtful it can be for some people. We have a working party of people, etc. He then says to say, whenever you feel you would like to be a part of that change we are trying to make, or even just watch or have information about what we are doing, then just reach out there. Well, you know, taking that on face great. value, that, that's a fairly I'm very strong... very passionate about this. That's so, a strong reflection on Sam's uh, leadership it's, there, it's, talking about it's Australia. It's a huge though. job as it is, but it sounds like Sam, it could be the person that uh, brings this all together and turns it around. Yeah. But one thing in your uh, article, Carol, it said Sam Mitchell that did say after the game on yeah. the weekend, I think that at the moment Cyril's not ready, but he's not going to give up. And, and neither has Alistair Clarkson. But in your article it said he would go to 17 clubs but not Hawthorne, so it's... Because of Jeff. Because of the Jeff, so... Well, he, at one stage he says because of Jeff, and I spoke to Jeff Kennett about this on Friday, and he was clearly shattered by that mm. comment and still feels shattered by Cyril's early departure and believes he did his best to apologise. Is it more than a Jean's comment? Uh, it was years and years... Cyril of, towards of Jeff, though? Yeah, ra racial red flags. And Jeff With... Kennett mm. became a symbol for everything that had happened. Now, I'm not saying that there weren't some great moments of joy for mm. Cyril Rioli at Hawthorne. And there are a lot of very angry people at Hawthorne at the moment. For great People who are now in very senior positions in Australian sport and elsewhere who say they had no idea, that they are gutted by this. Uh, I say that just shows how uneducated they were and how little they really understood and what needed to be done. And I say again, why wouldn't you have someone full-time at your club in dealing with these issues if you've got so many Indigenous players? Part of the things I want to ask you is how does it reflect on Alistair Clarkson and his legacy? Now, Shannon Rioli in the piece said it, they feel like he tried to do the right thing, but he made some uneducated comments at the time. How yeah. do you think it reflects on Clarko? I, I agree with what um, the Riolis say. I mean, Alistair Clarkson brought Indigenous players into Hawthorne after, you know, there had been, an, you know, an unofficial sort of position by Hawthorne back in the 80s that they really weren't welcome. Mm. Um, Alistair Clarkson made great moves in getting great Indigenous... And, you know, and they played wonderful football for him. But at, at times he made comments that were just uneducated. And there's no hatred by the Riolis for Alistair Clarkson and he has no need to make his peace with, peace with Cyril for Hawthorne now. He's doing it because he wants to and he's tried to as well. But Cyril still feels just hurt by the entire club and I think at the moment anyone who was there at that time symbolises the hurt that he felt. I'm struggling to sit here tonight wondering why Jeff Kennett's still president. Well, again, I don't think that this should be the, the number one undoing of Jeff Kennett. But there have Caro, been... Caro, this is, this is the latest incident in a long list for Jeff, who has done great things for that footy club. We understand that. But th this has gone on too long now. I mean, we're not forgetting it was only a few months ago that he took on the greatest coach of all time because he didn't want to pay him another $900,000, lost in a very bad way, and is now seeing a club pay Alistair Clarkson $900,000 to sit there in the box with a Sydney scarf on 
watching Alistair Clark. I mean, if that's not embarrassing enough, this incident has to be the end. It's, Look, it's, it's gone on too long. Jeff has made comments in the past that have upset other clubs that, that they construed as maybe ra racial or if, in, certainly insulting. Like this one three years ago when he talked about the security staff at Marble Stadium. And I'm not being racist when I say this, but when I saw some of the footage, the people who are making judgments while they wear these authoritative coats are not people who appear to have a great knowledge of our game. They're new arrivals to Australia, it appears. We don't know that. No, that's just the comments of a, of a, of a dinosaur. I'm sorry, Cara. We, it's 2022 now. You can't say those things and get away with it. And then we see what's happened. I, I, I was nearly in tears reading your article for what happened to the Riolis. It's, it's, yeah, I'm not it's saying that's all on Jeff, by the way, but it, he has well, been around long enough because, to know I mean, that it's about the optics, and I think the time for Jeff has been and gone. I'd well, really well I think what has exacerbated the Hawks for Change movement is that Jeff went to a performance of Hamilton, I think, in the last few weeks where he, I think he might have picked up COVID, but I think he made it clear to people there that he was going to dig in and that he wasn't planning on stay longer anytime soon and there's a real view that he should go but I say again he was not there for a lot of these incidents and he has been the unfortunate recipient of the final straw incident that has shattered the Rioli.